Hello, God bless you. You woke me up. This is Ellen Mollion from Wow Mom. And just have a minute. Let's talk. May I bring to you, it's kind of a, a, a thought that came to me in prayer this morning, talking to Deacon Pat about some things. I, I never thought about this before. It's been 26 or 27 years since our baby, Zachary Luke John, passed away. He was our eighth baby and our eighth blessing. He died at two and a half hours old, way too soon for Mama, me, and Pat. Pat's a doctor, so we're in the emergency room, and, and the nurse is there because I go really fast. And she, she says, um, do you mind if I call the doctor? No, there was no doctor there. He hadn't arrived. And she said, um, small baby. And she starts shouting. And frantically, a million people came in the room. Very, very sad. I had no idea that something was wrong with Zachary because our last baby had been a premature baby. So I thought, it's fine. My husband's at the foot up down with Zachary, and I was still being, being uh, finished from having the baby. My prayer partner, G, was there at my side. What a blessing that was of grace. Well, what happened? Well, the baby was ill, and it only lived two and a half hours. It went to the ER. I went to see the baby, and it came in our room. We passed the baby from person to person who had showed up in our room after the birth of Zachary, Luke John. It was such a huge support. But when, after the baby passed away, I had so many miracles. One friend told me many years later that she had bathed Zachary for me and put him in his gown before he was put in the casket. I never knew. One lady, um, a man, told me that he we passed the baby and sang happy birthday to Zachary and angels watching over he, my Lord. One man said, by the way, my baby died and they didn't let me hold it. It was like a stillborn. When I held Zachary, a part of me was healed. Other miracles happened. Zachary was on seen by all his siblings, and Dr. Roger, the godfather of one of my children and the one who had delivered some of my babies, was there to bring my children to us. It was a family affair, and we never will forget it. It was a sad moment, but as you know, God works all things together for good, and goodness has come out of tragedy, from tribe to tragedy. tragedy. This is my show that I spoke about, Zachary, if you'd like, I'm Michelle Sandra Gotcha's um, podcast. However, that's what we want to share about. Today it dawned on me when I went to get Zachary's death certificate, and I didn't even catch on until today because I kept going, Zachary was a statement for life. 500 people came for his funeral, miracles happened through his birth, and he was a statement for life. So what, when I picked up the death certificate, someone just happened to say to me, it was giving me, boy, you're lucky he lived two and a half hours because he could, could be considered a live birth, and he was alive until he passed away. And he said, she said to me, if he had been less hours, you wouldn't be able to claim him on taxes. And I was like, oh my word, <laughs> who says that to the morning mother? The morning mother who lost a child at two and a half hours old way too soon before she was ready. And I said to the lady, thank you. <laughs> With like a look of shock upon my face. Thank you. I would have rather kept Zachary than got the tax deduction from his death. However, it did dawn on me today. That was a statement for life. Zachary lived two and a half hours. Who says that's when he was alive? You see, Zachary was alive in my, in my womb. Zachary was alive from the minute I, Pat and I, well, we could see Zachary. He's alive from that moment. You know how I know? I sang to Zachary every day. I, not him, but I praise the Lord. And Zachary was among my, my participants in my prayer time. I pray every day. And upon my prayer time, came me before the Lord, praising the Lord, and came Zachary, praising the Lord. You know, I know when Zachary was in the ICU, my prayer partner said to me, you must go see him before he came to our room. I said, oh no. So I dressed myself as best I could, and she walked down with me to the ICU, and I said, hey, Zachary. And you know what? He turned his head, just like this, to look at his mother. He knew my voice. Yeah, he knew my voice. He's alive inside me when I sing to him. So this message is out there for mothers who maybe lost a baby or miscarried a baby or had a stillborn baby. God will work it out for the good. It takes time. It takes um, prayer. It takes support from mothers. But the miracles do happen through every life. We feel like Zachary fulfilled his purpose. We feel like Zachary spoke to many souls by his birth and through his death. It's really had 500 people, like I said. Zachary knew my voice. 
Zachary was alive inside me. Do you see why I'm pro-life? Do you see why I speak out? Do you see why I, I love Jesus so much? What happened with Zachary after many years? I have one article, I think it's in, maybe in Woman of Grace or Catholic Mom, and it's called, I Will Dance Again. When the baby died, I didn't think I'd ever dance again. I didn't ever think I'd ever feel joy. I didn't think I'd ever be able to talk about him without a tear in my eye and a, a gulp in my throat. However, I do, and I can, and it will happen to you as well. Death, death, where is their sting? I started um, a job one time, like a volunteer job for Miscarriage Matters. It was about moms who had lost babies. It was before we started speaking about how sad a miscarriage was and how much healing is needed. I got speakers on to talk. I had my favorite co-host was Marla. We had so much fun. She's out of oh, she's out of Puerto Rico. No, I, I always get mixed up. Yeah, Puerto Rico. So I, I really have, have felt like that was one fruit from Zachary's um, birth just for me. It branched my ministry. Since I had the opportunity to talk on radio at Miscarriage Matters, I began better at talking on radio and TV and then talking to moms and being there. When one, one mother, Kay Pretty's daughter, had a same incident as Zachary, her baby passed away way too soon. She had me go in and uh, pray for her. So we pray and write my daughter. And I did. And we became friends. And my, my first Bible study was done in her church out there in, I think it's Virginia or D.C. area. You know, miracles happen. The greatest miracle happens on the inside of your, your soul. It's not that your miracles don't happen on the outside. Sure, I love miracles. I love it. I pray and someone has a pregnancy and I'm praying now for some people. Or I pray and someone finds their spouse. Or I pray and, and their, um, their arm doesn't hurt anymore. Their arthritis flees away. But the greatest miracles in your heart where Jesus lives. So I'm much better talking than reading this. <laughs> so I did a podcast reading some of the quotes from presidents. you got to catch that one. It's called, Who Will Want to Be President? Not me. I'm going to pray for you, whoever you are out there, trying really hard to put effort in prayer to become the best you can be, to make our country the best it can be with everyone doing their part. So I do better on praying and, and talking on the radio like this. So today, if you hear his voice, harden out your heart. Don't be afraid, if you've lost a baby, to try again and to conceive again. You get a bonus baby, the baby you thought you'd never see or hold or hear his voice. But know this, those who are choosing to, to have an unexpected pregnancy and not know what to do. Hold that baby in prayer. Pause and listen. They hear your voice. They know you. You're their mommy. I will always remember that moment. I always thank my prayer partner, Judy, for being there for me as I, as I had to get up off the delivery table. I go to the bathroom and walk down the aisle to see my baby. I would never have done it. I said, I don't know if I can. You can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, and, and nothing is impossible with God. There was a great movie we saw. I know it, I mentioned it before, for Cameron, but it was in the movie. And it talks about adoption. Well, another miracle that happened, that movie was seen that when people give their baby away, if you're an unwed mother, your mom may never know her grandchild. So think about it carefully. That baby's alive. My baby was all alive only two and a half hours. My baby was alive nine months and two and a half hours. He took his first breath, but he was alive inside me. I was carrying him to heaven. I was carrying him to the earth and then to heaven. Hey, you out there, if you're listening to me, this is Ellen Mongan. Wow, Ellen at Yahoo.com. I speak to mothers and, and parents and, and um, guys and gals about how good is our God. I speak on Go Tell the World. That's what I'm doing today. I'm telling the world that if you're making a decision today, Make it for Christ. Make it for Christ's sake. Read the scripture and thank him for that life he entrusted you with. And then rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. May God be blessing you this day as I sign off today. Jesus is Lord. He died for me. My life's a thank you card to him who died for me. What are you doing with your life? Are you raising up those children in the way of the Lord? Are you boasting about God alone? God is good all the time, all day long. And that's why I always never end. So at the end, I think about a hundred more things to say. Today, I'm hanging up. Have a great day. Be blessed. Serve Lord with gladness and know that he alone is God. He has made you and not we ourselves. And he made Zachary too. Just for you to hear about today.